Hello World Lit students, I hope that you're doing well today. This is our third in the series of lectures uh, upon my absence, and we're going to cover a man that I think is just a fascinating guy. He is Italian, and he was born in 1469, 1469, and he died in 1527. 1527 is his death year. And his name is Niccolo Machiavelli. Again, Italian, if you couldn't tell by my fabulous imitation of an Italian accent. Niccolo is spelled N I C C O L O. His first name, Niccolo. N I C C O L O. His last name is Machiavelli. And you spell Machiavelli, I just like to say that, M-A-C-H-I-A-V, V as in victory, E-L-L-I, M-A-C-H-I-A-V-E-L-I, two L's, so I say that, V-E-L-L-I. He was a dramatist. He was a politician. He was an historian. And we don't know too much about him as, as a young person. We know more about him as an adult. He didn't have too much of an education. And he taught himself most everything that he learned. He taught himself languages. Uh, he read a lot of histories. Um, so he taught himself, he self-educated basically. And he did a pretty darn good job. You know, if you really want to do something, you'll do it well. Well, he lived in a town in Italy called Florence. F-L-O-R-E-N-C-E. -E. He lived in Florence. F-L-O-R-E-N-C-E. -E. And he held government office in Florence in 1498. Four, nine, eight. He became interested in developing a Florentine army. Something that is Florentine comes from Florence. Okay, that's the adjective that you would use from, for uh, Florentine. Like the adjective based on Oklahoma is Oklahoman. Florentine is an adjective for Florence. And he had this brilliant idea it's his own idea. He thought that it'd be just super if Florence created an army, a fighting force of volunteers of people who would volunteer from Florence to join the Florentine army. Niccolo loved Florence. He thought it was the best place this side of heaven. It was his favorite city. He loved all the opportunities there. He loved the people. He loved the food, the build. He just was in love with Florence. And he thought that everybody who lived in Florence should love Florence as much as he did and volunteer their time and maybe their life to serve Florence if Florence ever had to do battle with another one of these city-states. Remember we talked about the feudal system back in the, in the Middle Ages? Some of that's still in existence, especially Florida, Florida, my God, especially in Italy. Italy was one of the last countries in Europe to kind of join the modern world politically. And even to this day, Italian politics is all over the map. They're still not a very organized country in regard to politics. Anyway, that's another thing. So he believed that Florence should employ these Florentine people to defend Florence rather than to hire mercenaries to protect Florence. Mercenaries don't give a rat's fender about Florence. Why should they lay down their life for Florence? They're just hired people. A mercenary is somebody who will fight for you for a price. Okay. He thought it would be super if people from Florence would do that. 
people from Florence said, and he broadcasted. He, you know, told everybody. He's a government worker, so he had the ear of a lot of government people. He knew people in the army, and so he thought it would be so super. Well, people in Florence said, "What are you nuts? I don't want to be a soldier. We hire people to defend us. For crying out loud, you want me to lay my life down for Florence? No way, baby." Who are you to even come up with that idea? Okay. Oh, Niccolo was crushed because other people didn't feel the same way about Florence as he felt. He just felt so bad. Oh my gosh. He traveled throughout Europe as a politician, as a, a representative of the Florentine government. He traveled all about Europe. And he noticed that other European countries and cities had their own armies. And he thought, hey, Florence ought to do that too. So that's where he's getting this idea. Okay? That's where he's getting this idea. Well, in 1512, 1512, a very powerful family came to control Florence. And this is the Medici family, spelled M-E-D-I-C-I, M-E-D-I-C-I, -I, the Medicis. And it was a big family. Kind of think about it as mafia kind of people, okay? After all, the mafia did come from Italy. That's an interesting story. You ought to look up the history of the Cosa Nostra for the mafia. Fascinating. Anyway, so the Medici family took over Florence, took over control, you know, they would usurp the power. They were in charge, okay? They were really big dictators, and they were mean people. Oh my God, they'd poison you, they'd chop your head off. I mean, if you disagreed with them, you were a nobody, and chances are you didn't live long, okay? They were really into poisoning their enemies. They often would wear a ring that would have a secret uh, compartment and they would simply, you know, oh yeah, and just drop some poison in your coffee, your tea, your wine, or whatever. So, uh-huh, watch that. Talk about protecting your drink. Anyway, uh, so they fired Machiavelli. They thought, he's a nut. He's got these crazy ideas. He wants Florence to become like a European country. Heck, we're in charge. We're going to stay and keep Florence just all for us. Okay? So they were very um, uh, egotistical and, and, and very blunt. Um, the Medicis did not trust anybody who had worked for the previous ruler of Florence. Okay? It's Italy, but these little city-states all had their little families in control. Okay? So he was sent, Machiavelli was sent to prison even. They wanted to shut him up, they wanted to get rid of him, and he was sent to prison uh, for um, about 10 years. No, not 10 years, about a year. I'm sorry, one year. After his release, he was penniless. They had, uh, the, the, the Medici family had taken all of his bank accounts, all of his property, all of his possessions. And so he had nothing when he came out of jail a year later in 1513. He went to his parents' house and lived with them, and he was just crushed. He thought that he could get back into the good graces of the Medicis if he wrote a book. And he wrote a book while at his parents, and the book was called The Prince. P-R-I-N-C-E, The Prince. And he conceived of this book as a compliment, as supporting the Medici family. He wanted his job back because he wants to serve Florence as much as he can. Okay? Well, he thought that this book would win the Medici's over and they'd give him back his job and his property. Okay? Well, the prince was intended to unify Italy. It was a series of, of, you know, here's the Venetian state, here's the Rome state, here's the Florentine state, here's the Tuscan state. And they, he wanted to see Italy as one country, ruled by one person, one family. And so he wrote this book, hoping to convince 
Tuscany, Florence, Venice, to all come together and elect one guy, president, monarch, whatever the case may be, and Italy for Italians. No more of this fragmented states. The Medici's hated that because they wanted to maintain control of Florence. Florence is a very wealthy uh, city, okay, really, really wealthy. And he believed, Medici, Machiavelli, believed that the prince would help the Medici's unify Italy and stay in charge of Italy. Well, they didn't like that because they were happy with their own little piece of the pie that they were milking for all they could get, okay? So the prince really ticked off the Medici family. Went back to prison. He was penniless still. He was eventually released from prison and basically died penniless and nameless. But the social impact of the prince was tremendous. Politicians, rulers, important royal families didn't like it because it threatened their positions. But society, Italians, loved the prince because they're thinking, ordinary citizens are thinking, wouldn't it be great if Italy was all ruled by one family, one man, one person? Well, that'd be great. We could have a cohesive, unified country rather than all these little city-states that are oftentimes bickering with one another, have Italy for Italians, not just Florence for Florentines and Venice for Venetians. People who read this book, just an ordinary citizen like you or I, saw these princes in these little principalities of Venice, Florence, etc., saw them as sneaky and untrustworthy and money-grubbing and treacherous because they ruled with an iron fist. So there was a movement in Italy, all of Italy, to try to unify the country based on Machiavelli's idea. It did not go over. The ruling families of these little city-states were far too powerful. They didn't want to give up their share of the pie, you know what I mean? And finally, long after Machiavelli died, in 1870, 1870, there was a group of Italians who used the prince, the book The Prince, as a political handbook. This political group was called the Risurgimento, R I S. O-R-G-I-M-E-N-T-O. Resurgimento. The reorganization. That's what that means, basically. They wanted to reorganize Italy. All the time from the 1500s to the late 1800s, again, just one family would rule Venice, one family Rome, one fa family Florence. And so people were getting sick and tired of that. Let's enter into the 19th century. Europe is countries are ruled by one person. Maybe a king, but it's just one person. German for Germany, or Germany for Germans. English for Englishmen. France for Frenchmen. So let's do that for Italy. Let's just join the modern world, dudes. And by George, the Resurgimento used the prince as a handbook and actually reorganized and established Italy as a unified European country for the first time ever in history. They finally joined the modern era, shall we say. So that was an amazing event. So I'm sure that from heaven, Machiavelli is really proud of what he wrote because it worked. One person can control, through political means, a territory, a country, and make it work, make it viable. So. Thanks, Machiavelli. You did something good. Thanks, guys. See you next time.